I was camping in the Rockies in mid-October a while back, and this is the first time that I was actually scared out of my mind. Decided to go camp overnight, drive up mountain. After setting up camp, I go exploring. Close to dusk when I left. Now, it's pretty dark. No flashlight, cause clear night with moon. After a while, I stop where I am and start to head back to camp cause getting hard to see in the thick trees. Suddenly, complete silence. That silence that feels like the air is solid. No insects, no outdoor sounds, no leaves, nothing. Every hair on my body is standing up. Stop dead in tracks. Absolute quiet. Stuffy, suffocating quiet. I see the leaves rustle on the ground, but I don't hear it. Suddenly, I smell it. Like gallons of blood mixed with coins that have been in your hand for a long time. I taste it in my mouth. Metallic, rusty taste. It's so strong. My goosebumps have goosebumps. I'm as tense as I've ever been. Deep instinctual fear, like nothing I've ever felt goes down my spine. I know something is watching me. Something big and powerful. Stay still for hours, it seems like. All the while knowing it's sizing me up, it knows I'm there. Take rifle off my back. I always have a gun with me when I'm outdoors. Have rifle low ready. Suddenly, a big snap behind me to the left. Fire twice at the spot where I heard it. Hear an angry growl in the trees about 35 yards away from me. I can tell that whatever it is, it's big. I know what bears and cougars sound like and the feeling of when they're hunting you. This is totally different. Fucking book it back to my camp where my truck is. I can hear it following me. Run, run, run. I'm fucking dying, trying not to crash into anything in the dark. Luckily, the moon's out. After running or stumbling for fucking ever, I'm back at my truck. Leave tent and supplies. Fuck them. Drive off the mountain that night. Go back the next afternoon. My tent is rags. Food and supplies have been ransacked. Latches are open on containers. It wasn't an animal that did that. It had hands. Be me. Be working at gas station. Right off the interstate in this small town. Like about 600 people. Town doesn't even have its own police cops. Be like 3 a.m., this gold-colored muscle car comes tearing off the ramp into the parking lot. No one else is around. Guy gets out. Long, scraggly brown hair. Weathered face. Strolls in. Walks up to the counter. And just stares at me. Sir? Can I help you? Do you need cigarettes? Are you lost? Sir? He just stands there staring at me for what seemed like forever, when in reality, it was just five minutes or so. Suddenly, he turns around, and, watching me over his shoulder, starts to walk back to the door. He nods at me once, and exits the building, still staring at me over his shoulder. Guy gets to his car, opens the door, and stands there behind the door, just staring at me. At this point, I'm calling the police, but it will take forever because the town has no cops. So the county sheriff's police must respond. I locked the door, but the building was practically made of glass. Locks were not going to help. Guy just stands there for another five minutes, staring at me. Finally gets into his car and tears off back up the ramp onto the expressway. Cops arrive, take report. I nabbed his plate number for them and gave them the video recording of the lot from that night. Manager came in. It was a whole big to-do. One of the county deputies used to come into the store and get free coffee. One night, 
About three months later, he stopped by. I asked about the report that I filed about the weird staring guy. Police had stopped him a few miles down the road. He was acting weird, but they didn't really have a reason to hold him, so they let him go. Until a week later, my cop friend tells me that the guy from that night was in an accident in another state. He was killed instantly. It was a whole big mess. But in his trunk, investigators found a desiccated corpse that turned out to be his long, dead wife. My face when that corpse was in his trunk the whole time that he stared at me. Be me, walking around ship, be night out. It's absolutely amazing to be outside in the middle of nowhere, with just the light of the moon. Look off in the distance, see something. Can't quite make it out. Ask Captain if the radar sees it. Says nope, but he sees something too. We both concluded that it looked like a ship. Tried a spotlight, too far. Tried air horn slash speaker. Hello? Anyone out there? You guys having trouble? Loud clanks echo. It's not Morse. It's just banging. Ask for Morse code. More banging. Still no Morse code, though. We try to keep distance in case it's a trap. The banging stops. And now we hear what sounds like a full crew going into battle stations, which is weird because it's a 100 to 200 foot boat at most. But we are at a distance, and this could have just been echoes. We finally get close enough to shine light. Just a lost boat. Probably found its way there because a rope snapped. Upon closer inspection, it looks ages old. Paint is basically stripped, holes everywhere. I dated that it must have been from the 1900s. What's crazy is the anchor was down but it could have been because of rust. We try air horn again. No answer. We try to radio nearest port. Fuzz on the radio. We got through. They said they would come check it out. And by the time we got back, the ship was gone. About a little over 10 years ago, my mother and stepfather were getting a divorce. My mother, brother, and I moved to a townhouse complex. It's a full house, but the next house is attached. At the time, I was 11 or 12. I only saw my mother every other weekend due to moving in with my dad for stability. Whenever I was over, I always felt uncomfortable in there. I developed a fear of the dark which I had not had since I was four or five, and I only had when staying in the townhouse. It always felt like I was being watched, and that I was in a place that I didn't belong. The basement being the worst part of the house, I refused to go down there alone. It was one huge room, the size of the whole house's length and width. I never, fucking never, would go to the dark half of the basement, Felt that someone, or something, was watching me from that half of the basement whenever I was down there. It always felt like I was in some sort of danger. I developed depression while I was there. My nights consisted of me staying up with the lights on. My brother's room was next to mine, but was always out. I would hear, several times a night, the door to the front door open and footsteps would walk upstairs. One night, it was constant, the sound of walking up and down the stairs. I went outside my room to ask my brother why he got home so late, and if he could keep it down. There was nothing there. I checked my brother's room. He was asleep. Turns out, he had the night off, and didn't go out that night either. After that, I knew it wasn't my brother making that noise, and it got worse for me. I started picturing a bearded man in my head whenever I heard the stairs make noise. 
My brother also got into trouble around this time. He was very angry all the time, which was unlike him and still is today. I never met the neighbors, but you could hear the woman and man and their kid often. We had only two TVs, and I liked watching G4 TV, so I would watch TV in my mother's room. I, like the basement, felt like I was being watched, and it was uncomfortable. Unlike the basement, I didn't feel in danger. I always kept checking over my shoulder and to the open closet and bathroom, just instinctively. Recently, I had a nightmare about the fucking place. I decided that when I saw my mother, to tell her about it, just as small talk. I told her everything that I experienced there. She gets serious with me. Apparently, she had the same experiences, but never wanted to alert me or my brother for various reasons. She said that she would often call me downstairs because she was afraid of the basement as well and would hear shuffling in the back half, which is where I said that shit was really creepy. She often heard noises of doors opening and closing and someone walking up the stairs during the day when I was at my dad's. She assumed it was my brother home early, often because he was, and it sounded like he would rush inside, run up the stairs, and slammed his door, but without saying anything. We often heard our neighbors, like I said, but she actually talked to the guy living there. On more than one occasion, we heard a woman and a man flirting in the evening and laughing and having a good time, usually when we were all eating dinner. Same for a mother and child during the day. The guy living there was a med student who was often not home. He said he was usually out at nights and sleeping during the day. And he told my mother that he lived alone. He apparently never heard us, even though we were a loud bunch. My mother also said she believed my depression and my brother's anger, which he had been getting more aggressive was tied to the home. She actually paid for my brother to move out, telling both of us that she thought it would help him with school and work, which it did. My mother's boyfriend, who I forgot to mention, moved in after about a year, also experienced the same shit, but only told my mother. He said he often saw people walking around in the other room in the corner of his eye, even when he was alone. My mother also told me about this man who she often woke up to. He was always standing in the doorway of her room. She described the man who I pictured in my head, but said he had these sunken dark holes where his eyes should be. Apparently, the look he gave her was one of pure hatred. He was translucent as well, which I think kept her from calling the cops. We asked the managers of the townhouses if there was a death on the property before moving out, or if there was a demolished home or anything to explain the hostility that we all felt from this guy. There was nothing on the property prior to the complex. I kind of wonder if it was maybe demonic or something. To be honest, I really don't know much about hauntings or demons beyond horror movies, so I could be speaking out my ass, but the thought of that place still scares me pretty badly, even in my mid-thirties. Time for some fucking OC. I don't even give a shit if anyone believes me. I just want to get it off my chest. Live in boonies, basically forest gerrymandered by houses and farms that go in and out of repair. There are several other houses right by mine, but I talk to the neighbors, exactly none. A fact I'm glad for, because the community looks like some straight-up Silent Hill shit sometimes. There's a weekly spoopy happening, to the point where I get so bored with it, I just shrug it off as the status quo. Several weeks back, this changed. The time is 10am. I'm savoring being a lazy fuck for not having to go into work that day, 
drifting in and out of sleep. Suddenly, ear-splitting roar. All of my what? Check laptop. I do comedy YouTube playlists to help me get to sleep. Just music tends to put me on edge for whatever reason. To see if it's an ad. No ad playing. Halfway through two-hour video. Nothing in Dark Seed 2 makes the sound that I just heard. Even if it had been, something that loud would have blown out my laptop's rather shitty speakers. Slightly confused, turn off pending alarm and drift in and out of consciousness with laptop on bed so I can roll over and check if I hear it again. Two hours later, halfway conscious. Scrawk, motherfucker, forgot about me? The roar both sounded louder and closer, as well as clearer. It sounded like a bastard child of a bear roar and that foghorn cry that Godzilla makes. Tactically what? Sounded like it came from behind house. Decided I'm not sleeping until I find out what made that noise. Grab lightly ruined oak and hiking staff. Grab fireplace poker. Bathe both in ash as whatever the fuck made that noise was clearly not of this fucking earth anyways. Trek in a woods. Check glove compass to double check that I haven't been turned around like I had before in the same woods. Glove compass is going beyond fucking nuts, spinning like a top, occasionally pointing towards direction of clearing I visited before with friends. I am a clearly sane, rational, and level-headed individual. So obviously. So obviously. I go towards the noise. As I get closer, hear thrashing in the clearing, as well as a cow. There's a dairy farm next to my house but I don't recall Farmer Dan breeding fucking mutants. Start to see shit that's clearly off. Large movements through the gaps in the tree line. Low rumbling sound. Unnatural heat. Suddenly very glad I hadn't changed out of my sleep shorts. Occasional burn mark on the ground. Yes, I am that retard in the horror movie that moves towards the live hellmouth, apparently. Eventually, get to clearing to see what the ruckus is all about. Peek out from behind tree. It's a fuck-mothering dragon. Or at least, that's what I'd fucking assume. Think less Tolkien, more Lovecraft. It had pale gray skin that looked like boiled konjac, to the point where it appeared actively wet. It was hexapodal, balanced on six squat legs that... Looked like an elephant's more than anything. There were a pair of massive wings on its back that looked like they could actually lift the monstrosity off the ground. Even folded, they seemed beyond massive. Its tail looked like it had been stumped, not in the way that it had cut off, but there was some sort of bulbous mass where the tail was supposed to continue. And then, there was its head and neck, it was like some kind of fucked up xenomorph. Recesses where its eyes obviously should have been, but they seemed to have skin over them. Yellowed teeth sticking out its closed maw on both sides. Painted red with the gore of the cow that it had just finished eating. And that's when my brain got a chance to catch up from Holy Fuck Dragon and got a chance to look at the rest of the clearing. It was totally scorched. Like, basically, everything was blackened. Hear snapping noise in woods roughly to the left of me. Quote-unquote dragon looks up. Its head is pointed in a decidedly uncomfortable at me direction. Hide behind tree. What smells like ozone? Suddenly, rushing sound, like a dam burst. About to look from behind tree, but my judgment gets the best of me. Good fucking thing, because I suddenly find myself a yard from a large stream of aggressive something. To this day, I can't figure it out what it was exactly. Going out of green text here for a second, it didn't seem to be exactly fire or a flammable substance. The movement was too jerky, but it didn't spark or crackle like electricity. And I still have the right half of my body, so I'm guessing it wasn't plasma. 
but it was sure as fuck burning anything that it touched. A spark got kicked up and burnt a sizable hole in my shirt. Begin tactically praying in Old Norse once the fire dies down. Figure, I'm not escaping, so I might as well go out fighting. Jump out from behind tree, ready to suicide charge, a dragon. Hear rustling from same spot as before. Boom. Same roar as before, followed by some decidedly unpleasant shrieking. Large gaping hole opened in eye recess. Hear shouting. Get the fuck away from my cows, you fucker. Holy shit, it's Farmer Dan. Not looking at him, focusing on big fucker. It unfurls its wings and starts flapping and takes to the sky with surprising expediency for something that had a torso the size of an RV. And it certainly felt like a large aircraft had just taken off. I was nearly bowled over from the force of the wind. It circles in the air once before heading out towards the lake. Stand there for a moment, just plain vanilla dumbfounded. More movement. Brandish fireplace poker. Farmer Dan is now about 10 feet from me. The gun in his hands looked like an old style break action, but the barrels were ridiculously large in diameter. My brain finally processes the fact that I'm being asked a question. Anon, what the fuck are you doing out here? Try my hardest to point out that this is not the most important question to be asked in this situation. Finally managed to coax an answer out of him. Apparently, several of his longhorns went missing from the pasture, and he caught sight of it moving to that clearing after one more had disappeared. Hunter friends had apparently reported some weird goings-on in his backwoods to him. Said they found some freaky shit and some big-ass nest. Only one dead cow in this clearing, however, and no nest to be seen. My brain refused to examine the possible meaning of those facts at the time. Ask him about the gun. Says he uses it to hunt whatever goes after his cows. The inflection implied this was not the first supernatural entity he'd shot out using his shotgun. Farmer Dan stops me before I go back onto the path. Don't tell anybody about this, Anon. No use causing a fuss over some fairy tale nonsense. I am not about to disagree with a man holding what I can only assume is a two or less gauge. Walk back home and fall asleep. Wake up later that day, assuming it was all some sort of fucked up dream. Look down and notice hole and shirt was legitimately there. Brain is reeling for not dragon related answers. Half hardly settle on this somehow being the shirt that I burned slightly during a bonfire several years beforehand. Forced to confront reality when I noticed said shirt lying on the floor. Decide then and there, I'm moving to the largest city I can get to, so I don't have to deal with this bullshit anymore. There was a huge rainstorm the next day, so a lot of the char was washed out. But sure the fuck enough, when I went back to that clearing a several days later, it was filled with moral mushrooms so it had to have been scorched at some point. I don't know what the fuck I saw, and I don't know if Kay would have had any better idea of what it was. But if I ever know that thing's in the area again, I'm finding as many commandos as possible and leading reality's first dragon-slaying raid. I had this one experience where I was almost abducted. B18, walking to friend's house to go drink and play some video games. He lives on the opposite side of the city, 45 minute walk away. On my way there, I have to pass a local park. Normally pretty chill, but a few gang incidents have resulted in kidnappings and murders. It's about 8 when I'm walking through the park, so it's dark. No one around except for four guys smoking at one of the benches near the soccer field. One of the guy asks, Want a toke? I tell him no, I'm not a smoker. I keep walking toward friend's house. 
I'm almost there. He lives two blocks from the underpass that I was about to cross. A van comes up behind and slows down near me. Same guys from the park. The same guy says, Maybe you like a drink instead. While drinking a beer. Tell him no and keep walking. They're driving slow enough to match my walking speed. I yell, What the fuck do you want? The guy instantly changes from looking like he's high or drunk to being angry. He throws his beer at the floor and says, Get him. The door on the side of the van slides open and two of the guys get out. I instantly think, I'm fucked, what do I do? All I have to protect myself is a pocket knife. I go to grab it from my inside pocket of my jacket. I think, pretend it's a gun and leave my hand in my jacket, giving the impression that I have a gun. The two guys stop charging towards me. The guy that offered the drink says, Leave him. Looks at me and says, Next time, you may not be so lucky. They speed off. I call the police and tell them a weird van tried taking me near the park. They say they'll send a car to scout the area for the van. They ended up catching them trying to pick up a 17-year-old girl. They find drugs, alcohol, and a camera with pictures of kids and teens that they abducted, completely nude and tied up. I was really freaked out about how close I was to getting kidnapped. I don't walk at night there anymore, especially in that area. I had a very good friend who I'll call Sherlock, because he believed very much in similar philosophies to Sherlock, as in deductive reasoning, the purity of priori logic. I've heard him over the radio when he's being shot at and having RPGs fired at him, and he sounded as calm and relaxed as somebody on holiday in an ice cream shop, specifying what flavor they wanted. For example, Cucumber Crisp 071. I'm under fairly heavy, sustained fire. It looks like part of my fuselage just gave away. Over. That sort of thing. I'm fairly sure he was slightly autistic. Because he would just wait until base told him to pull out, or whatever. He also had no mercy. If he had authorization to fire, he would light them up. No qualms. No limitations. Anyway... I've seen Sherlock quake like a fucking leaf in the winter wind. It must have been around 3 a.m., and there was fuck all to do. I was playing poker against a computer, and winning. Another friend of mine was reading Kant on my bed, when he walked into my room. Pretty unusual, because he always knocked. He delivered some supplies to an outpost about 70 kilometers away from the main base, not deep in hostile territory, but hostile enough that you would expect an RPG or two when you supplied them. Or took out the wounded, which is mainly what Sherlock did, even volunteering to do it. He'd sat down in the afternoon and helped unload the supplies. Mainly medical, ammunition, and tools, and stuck around taking requests from the CO, who was running low on water and water purification tablets. A few privates were on duty in the dusk, and one of them freaked, saying he could see something through thermals that he couldn't see in person. This piqued Sherlock's curiosity, so he had a look. Sure enough, when he looked through thermals, he could see the shape of a man about 200 meters down the path, but looking with binoculars, couldn't see anything, even with night vision. This is quite common in Afghanistan. It's reported uncommonly. Despite being an uncommon event, it's always quite unnerving when it happens. But according to Sherlock, he wasn't unnerved, just his deductive reasoning pricking up. First, he thought the thermals were dodgy, so he used another set, and then another set. Then he thought the binoculars were bad, so he used another pair, which weren't just thermal imaging but infrared night vision. Rather than the shitty green tinted type, it was a grayscale type. 
which showed significant detail. Now, on the infrared grayscale, he could see it. Apparently, it was a human and everything other than having a head. The body was human, perfectly proportioned, but there was no head. Now, the other night vision didn't show this. Sherlock, armed with nothing other than our standard issue Browning High Power, and probably just a single magazine, strolled 200 meters down the path to see if he could see anything. Apparently not, though he said it felt unusually chilly, and he did feel quite uneasy. It was on his way back when he heard soldiers shouting. Looking behind him, he saw four or five putrefied bodies shambling after him. He described the smell as rancid and their look as if they had contracted the vilest leprosy. They were moving pretty quickly and he could see body parts, fingers, hands, even an entire arm just drop off. When he said they were like the walking dead, I felt a chill go up my spine, and my friend reading Kent actually looked up at us. Sherlock said he shouted a warning to the bodies, apparently rotting as if dead for a few days, appendages and torsos swollen from the sun, and as they continued to gain ground on him, he began opening fire. Despite one of them being hit several times, losing most of its shoulder, and through the stomach, it single-mindedly continued pursuing Sherlock, who, for the first time ever, sprinted away. A rifleman at the outpost shot them with a more high-powered weapon and killed, or re-killed, one of them. As soon as one of them went lifeless, the others would single-mindedly stuff their faces full of flesh, just tearing it off limbs and bodies. No shame, no disgust like they hadn't eaten for days. At this point, the fellow reading Kent piped up. He had heard of similar stories in his journeys to outposts. Some American soldiers, badly injured and delirious in the sun, told him how they had seen their brothers in arms, set upon by filthy Mahajidan, and ripped apart, alive. Limbs ripped from bodies, heads from necks, and how they could rip the flesh with their long-nailed fingers, gouging it out or biting it off the bones. They had said only fire or high-velocity weapons, not small arms, could actually stop them. Afghan soldiers, when mortally wounded, prefer to kill themselves than be captured, because they've heard the stories and know the folklore. It is true, they do kill themselves. I've seen it. I must also admit as I became more experienced and hardened to the oddness of Afghanistan. I also heard quite a few of these stories myself, to the point where they don't even worry me anymore. I think I even saw a herd of them rampage through a village. But it's Afghanistan, so they could have been tripping on opiates. Come home from drinking with my buddies, buzzed and getting tired. See my wife walking to the bedroom. It's bedtime for her too. Laying in bed with wife. We're talking in the dark, as is our nightly routine. She leaves to use the restroom. Comes back about one minute later. Closes and locks the door as usual. Lays down in bed again. She likes to sleep with her arm over me and head in my neck. Attempt to talk with her. No response. Assume she's fallen asleep. Start nodding off. Brain thinking of stupid shit like elephants doing backflips. Snap out of my sleep. Bedroom door knob is jiggling. Look at the door and hear my wife on the other side say, Stop playing, let me in. Shit bricks. Dot gif. Look down at my sleeping wife. Can barely make anything out because of the dark. Slip out from under her and turn on the light. Look back at her. No one's there. Look around the door. Wife starts getting pissed and demanding I let her in. Go to open the door. Pitch black of the hallway. No one's there. Shit more bricks. Gif. Suddenly, sober up and realize that my wife 
is working a double shift. Drown in bricks I shat dot gif. It unfurls its wings and starts flapping and takes to the sky with surprising experiencity. <laughs> what? What was that? Halfway conscious. Scrawk, motherfucker, forgot about me? The roar both sounded <laughs> So obviously. So obviously. I go towards the noise. 